What I want to talk about today is, uh, is a pathogenic microorganism called Listeria. Um, Listeria is uh, a, a genus uh, which contains about 20 different species, but only one of those species is pathogenic, and that's Listeria monocytogenes, and that's the one that we tend to think of as a problem within foods. Now, um, Listeria is an unusual uh, microorganism when we compare it to other food pathogens in that it can grow at chill temperatures. If we look at other major pathogens like Campylobacter, Salmonella and E. coli, once we get to good chill temperatures, they stop growing, they don't grow. And that gives us a great deal of confidence that good chill prevents uh, further risks from those organisms. Listeria is unusual. It's got reports that it can grow even down at zero degrees. So uh, even very slowly, but it's still able to grow. So even at good chill temperatures, Listeria is able to grow increasing numbers and therefore increase the risk of potential food poisoning in those cases. Now if we look at the number of food poisoning cases that are caused per year by Listeria, uh, it's actually a lot lower than those that we see from Campylobacter uh, and, and Salmonella. So in the UK, we tend to get only about um, 200 odd cases per year. Um, but the problem with Listeria is it's got a, a very large uh, mortality rate. So about 25 to 30% of the people that get it will die because of the infection. So it's actually a really, really serious organism and one we have to learn to control quite well. One of the main areas uh, we find a problem with Listeria is in chilled foods um, because of that ability to grow at chill temperatures. And it tends to like to grow in uh, environments that are, that are damp, uh, with, with slightly higher moisture. It can be a real problem in chill food production plants. And, and if it's, it becomes established in a plant, it can be very, very difficult to, uh, to remove it uh, and get the plant clean. So control measures can be really important. Now, when we first started to see issues with, uh, with Listeria, it was linked to a range of chill food products, chill ready-to-eat food products, um, primarily cooked sliced meat, ready-to-eat meat products, um, dairy products like cheeses um, and, and pâtés and so on. And those were the main areas that, that we were concerned with. And the industry did a very good job at looking at how those, those particular foods were controlled uh, and listeria rates stabilised and started to drop. But over recent years, we've, we've actually seen quite a, an interesting increase um, in outbreaks from around the world. Um, a couple of years ago, the biggest ever food poisoning outbreak associated with, uh, with Listeria occurred in South Africa. Um, there, there were over a thousand cases um, and many hundreds of deaths. And that was due to contamination of a ready-to-eat meat product that was called Poloni, um, which is eaten quite widely in, in South Africa, caused a very big outbreak, changed the way South Africa looked at that particular type of, of food products. And now they've had to build in some, uh, some control measures in order to prevent that happening uh, again, and, and it seems to be being controlled. Um, we had uh, an outbreak a uh, year before last in Europe um, caused by quite an unusual food product, and that was frozen sweet corn. It was a Europe-wide outbreak. We saw many uh, cases in, in the UK, but other countries in Europe uh, cases also. And it was unusual because um, frozen sweet corn is a product that is designed to be cooked before consumption. Now, cooking will kill Listeria. It's not a heat-resistant microorganism, and a good cooking process will make sure the organism doesn't survive and it's not present in the cooked food. In this case, we were seeing a change in the way the consumer started to use that particular frozen vegetable product, in that it was started to be used by being added into things like salad products and smoothies without being cooked before it was used. So there was no control there at the consumer level for Listeria in the product. That caused the problem and it resulted in, in the Food Standards Agency issuing advice to consumers that that product should be cooked before consumption and, and further labelling of uh, bags, retail bags of, of uh, frozen sweet corn to say they should be cooked before consumption to eliminate that particular issue. One unusual outbreak that occurred uh, a number of years ago in the USA was linked to uh, cut pre-sliced pre melon products. It's unusual to see listeria, or was unusual to see listeria linked in with fruits. Um, but in this case, it was the biggest uh, listeriosis outbreak they'd ever seen in the United States. Again, it was linked to pre-cut melons. Um, 
pre-cut and, and, and eaten on their own or in other uh, fruit mixes. And it's believed that the, the outside of the melon itself could become contaminated, environmentally contaminated with listeria. That's not the issue. When the melon was actually handled in slightly unhygienic conditions, that contamination on the outside was, was, was pulled through and, and, uh, during the slicing process and made contact with the melon flesh itself. Um, the one unusual thing about melon compared to other fruits is that the pH of the flesh is a little bit higher. Most fruits we, we see the flesh being quite a low pH, it's quite acidic. And acidity, low pH, is a very good way of limiting and controlling listeria growth. They won't grow particularly well at very low pHs. When we get to the pH of, of melons, which is up at about pH 6 or 6.5, that isn't a controlling pH for listeria. Listeria can grow. So the chill of the melon isn't, isn't controlling the growth and the pH isn't controlling the growth. So the organism could grow increasing numbers and increase the risk to consumers in that particular product type. Now, when we start thinking about that, we, we think about, well, how do we control and how do we get best advice on control of listeria in chilled food production and chilled foods? And we do a lot of work in this area at Camden BRI. Um, we can give advice on how legislation applies to different product types. In Europe, our food uh, our microbiological criterion regulation in foods um, has a section on listeria monostogenes. And we can help advise people which part of the legislation applies to their food product type. We can help them in doing things like predictive modeling to find out whether listeria can grow in their products. Challenge testing, again, to find whether listeria can grow in the products and shelf life analysis. And that again helps them define the risk with their foods and which part of the legislation applies to their food type. We also produce and are in the process of producing guidance on the best ways of, of, of controlling listeria in chilled food products. Um, that's being written at the moment and should be produced and published in the very near future. Uh, and we have another project just starting which is looking at the best ways to control listeria in foods uh, and how that can be used to give confidence that listeria is well controlled in food products.